Today, we will be using magic anime to make a picture like this one of Mona Lisa come to life with movement. We will use this running animation as the input movement. And now Mona Lisa is running. So input image, input animation, output video of the input image moving in the animation. We will also look at how to make our own input animation with our own video. In this example, here is a four second clip. This was not a good example. It turns out because the scaling of Mona Lisa in the input image and of Napoleon in the dance video is significant as this one is much smaller. This ends up being the resulting video. Oh dear. But you get the idea. You can use your own custom video that is scaled with a similar size, unlike this example. Anyways, let's get to it. I created a fork of Magic Animate with changes needed to get it running on Windows. We will create a new Conda environment with Python 3.10. I will leave a link to the prerequisite video in case you don't have Conda. We will also need Git and FFmpeg installed from the prerequisite video at the very least. Next, we will clone this repository using Git clone. And then we will install dependencies. You may want to make sure ffmpeg is installed by running the ffmpeg command from a command prompt to see if it returns the version information indicating it is installed. Let's install the dependencies from the requirements text file. Then we must download the pre-trained models. We first need to create a new folder in this directory. I am going to do it using the make directory command like this instead of through file explorer because why not and here is the new folder we will need to cd into the folder and install the models using the three separate git clone commands notice the git lfs install to enable large file downloads and at the end we cd back to the root directory of the application in this command block i already downloaded the models earlier so i won't run the three git clone commands in this video but you would need to run the three commands once you run the three commands to download then cd back to the root folder of the app here is the pre-trained folder to which i downloaded earlier which contains the three subfolders one for each of the git clone commands fair warning the downloads are huge over 100 gigabytes with that done, we can launch the Gradio Web UI. Here we have the box where the result will go, an input reference image and a motion sequence, along with other settings. Later, we will look at creating our own custom motion sequence from an input video, but for now, we will use one of the built-in ones. I will scroll down and click the built-in example input image and motion sequence, and then click animate. This one is of Mona Lisa, and then the sequence is someone running. Let's click animate and see what happens. It will show the Gradio loading icon in the result. We can go to the Conda prompt to track the progress. It is using 100% of the GPU and CUDA during the entire time. It has finished. Let's take a look. Great. Note that the movement sequence person size should be about the same as the input image person size, because if it is not, we saw what happens with the Napoleon dance video example at the beginning. This video is stored in the demo outputs folder. But notice how the generated video shows us the two inputs and the one output in one video. Well, what if we just want that one output of Mona Lisa running in the video? Well, we can run the other inference command for that. I am going to control C to cancel out of the web UI app. Then on the GitHub page, if we scroll down to the inference command, we can call that command to run inference, which will give us just Mona Lisa running. Let's first open this config file called animation.yaml. It is in the configs prompts folder. This lists all the inputs. I am going to delete everything but the Mona Lisa image for the input image and delete everything except for the running animation for the input video. And then save this config file. Now let's copy paste and run this inference command. Once it finishes, go into the samples folder, then the folder for the latest timestamp and then videos. There will be the video with just Mona Lisa running and a folder with the video of all three like what we saw earlier from Gradio.
Next, let's use a custom input video to create the movement animation. For that, we will be using this GitHub repository. This currently doesn't work on Windows. We can use WSL to run it locally, but for this video, I will just use the Google Colab. Click on this link to open in Google Colab. Run the first two cells to install the libraries. Once that finishes, scroll down to the next section. Here we will provide the input video and the desired output motion animation video name. Let's take a look at the input video I plan to use for best results. Use a video that has a person with about the same size as the person in the input image you are using. I did not take my own advice. Just drag and drop the video to the Google Colab below the folders in the box that says to upload them to session storage. Once that finishes, we will see the video file listed on the left. We must remember to change the input file name to match the name of the file we uploaded, and we can leave the output file name as is for now. After updating the file name, we can run this cell. When it finishes, refresh the files on the left to see the new output file. Click the three dots and download the file. Let's take a look. We can use this file as the input video when using the Gradio app or as the video for when using the inference command. I am going to rename it to be more descriptive and then drag and drop it to where the other animation videos are located for convenience when we modify the config file in the inputs, applications, driving, dense post folder. The recommended frame width and height of this animation video is 512 by 512. If we check any of the existing animation videos, they are going to all be 512 by 512. The frame width and height of the one we generated from Google Colab is going to take on the same frame width and height of the input video used. This might work fine, or you might be able to change the config value from 512 to something to match your video, but I will just use this FFmpeg command to change the frame width and height to 512. I am going to open another prompt window and cd to this folder and then run this command. I will leave this command in the description. It will create a new video copy of our animation video, but will have a frame width and height of 512. cd to the folder, copy, paste, and run the command. Now let's look at the generated video's properties to make sure it is the 512 by 512. Great! Now I had ran the original video and then this video through the inference command, but the progress wouldn't make it past 0%. So I decided I would shorten the video from the current 6 seconds down to 4 seconds using another FFmpeg command. Here is the FFmpeg command that will take that video and create another video with just the first 4 seconds. Copy, paste and run it. Spoiler alert, this one also stayed at 0% for a long time. I ended up just waiting for a while and it eventually started making progress, so maybe I just needed to be more patient. And here is the animation video with just 4 seconds and 512 by 512. Let's copy paste the file name to the config file as the input video to use for the animation. Under the video path, we can specify this new file and then go back to the conda prompt and rerun the inference command. This is where it would take a very long time at 0%. I ended up quitting out the previous two times with the original one and with the 512 by 512 6 second clips, but this time I just waited for a long time. It is finally progressing and is now at 4%. On this GitHub comment, it is mentioned to also have the FPS at 25 and to center crop it and then resize and change the FPS. I didn't center crop it or change the FPS in my example, but doing this should provide better results in addition to the size of the animation person being similar to the size of the image person. 84 years later, it has finally finished. Let's go to the folder where the results are stored and take a look, even though we already know how it looks from the beginning of this video. Also, you can use your own custom input image instead of the default Mona Lisa one, but I ended up just using the Mona Lisa one in the examples today. That looks very interesting. Also, your input video and image should have the same number of people, otherwise you will get even more interesting results. As I randomly click on folders and files here while I talk, this application to run locally will require over 100 gigabytes of disk space from the downloaded models and will require a GPU. I have an RTX 3060 with 12 gigabytes of RAM and generating the custom video took a long time. As this technology and application improves, I am sure they will have improvements and enhancements as time goes on.
I am just going to watch this video in a loop and become hypnotized with the four-second dance clip over and over again. Maybe just for fun, I might upload a one-hour YouTube video with this four-second clip playing in a loop for the entire one hour. That sounds like a fantastic idea. That triggered an Alba appearance. I will use that as the thumbnail for this video. Anyways, that is all for now. Thanks for watching.